Thank you for uh, attending today. I understand this is the last uh, session or the last evening's work of three days of uh, event. So it's a great privilege to be here uh, from Australia to perhaps share with you some of the insights of work that we're currently looking at in, in, in Australia in, in terms of residential, which uh, as a market has changed quite a lot um, over the last 20 years that I've been working in Melbourne. And um, so we do, ah, okay. I've, I've got three files that I can present today. Um, I'll, I'll, I can be quite quick. The first one is a little bit about Buchan Group and some of the work that we've done in terms of residential work. And then there's another one, which is about a couple of projects that we've done in India, um, two residential projects that are kind of interlinked a little bit. So a, a quick overview of that as a sort of a design process. And then I thought might share some insights around um, built to rent, which is a, a, a topic that is very um, important to the Australian market. It's where the residential market is evolving into. Uh, when I walk around the halls just now, it's like uh, five, ten years ago in Australia. There was a lot of projects like that that are being developed, some very good architectural designs, very good uh, examples of new ways of living, and each project is trying to be unique. And it was more of a, from a kind of a selling proposition. Uh, Bill to rent is quite different to that. It's, come about because of affordability issues and uh, lack of uh, sites. So there's a number of other uh, conditions, if you like, that are driving the market now. Uh, so I could talk about that and I say it's, it's mainly from a Western or Australian, UK and American perspective, but there could be lessons there that in the future might apply to India uh, and making that uh, applicable to a, a, a local market. So. Hopefully they're of interest to you. Um, I, I, I can certainly talk in a little bit more detail, but I, I, if, I'll probably give a bit of an overview. And then if people have questions, happy to uh, talk in more detail about something that's of interest. So uh, as I say, I'm not necessarily sure what might be relevant for you in terms of uh, the local market here in, in Hyderabad. So this is... Um, Sorry, this should be on two slides, so it makes it a little bit difficult to, to show because they're meant to be read together. But it gives a, an introduction really to Buck and Group and the work that we do in, in residential. Um, obviously the text is not going to be readable, so we'll quickly skip through some of these and just show some of the examples of our work. So this is current work that we have on at the moment. Um, I'll talk about this project in a later because this is one in Chennai that we did a, a couple of years ago. Um, and a lot of the work that we're doing currently is, is more of a mixed use. So rather than being a, a, a straight residential only development, they're working with retail uh, components, uh, hotel, workplace, and it's the synergy of these elements all coming together that create new ways of living. A lot of them are to do with combining technology, a lot of them are to do with combining sustainability so that people can be uh, living in zero carbon housing and, and be proud of where they're living and know what their contributions, their carbon footprint is. So these are a lot of the, the elements that give high density living a, a cost effective, a social, because uh, it's built around communities and built around sustainability. So these are the drivers for Australia of a lot of our projects. Um, as I say, I won't dwell on these, they're just giving you a, a range of the size and scale of some of our residential projects that we do. So we do also all, all the work from interiors to architecture, facade, sustainability. Um, so I think that's, as I say, a bit of an overview. It might be easier to talk on the next slide the pack goes to a project and starts to show uh, a design process that we bring to each of these projects. These are, let's say, more of an overview in terms of a breadth of quality. Some of them might be quite small scale, like this, where it's two or three storey, very high luxury apartments, 
to tall towers and, and mixed-use developments. If we could, I think that's the last slides coming. If we could go to the next slide, number two. This project is two projects. So the first one was uh, a competition that we did in for a housing in Pune uh, many years ago now, probably eight or nine years ago. And uh, it was a competition that we won, uh, but unfortunately we then didn't get the chance to develop it up. I think the person, the developer took the idea and then worked with it uh, to develop it up themselves. And it was, um, taking the idea of the importance of a village in, in Indian culture and trying to not come and just do a Western design, but to actually try and understand. And uh, As a Westerner, we're always going to, in some ways, get that wrong, but we wanted a kind of a dialogue with the developer about how the community would work together rather than just giving a Western sort of design project. So it was about the way houses are grouped together, the social spaces that link families and people together and we wanted to then bring them together and try and stack those into a, what we called a, a series of vertical villages. So they were grouped around courtyard spaces. All four sides of the apartments were open to nature. We wanted to encourage wind and water movements to give a bit of cooling as a natural process. So and then using those foot groupings of four uh, levels to create a, a community where you'd know the other 15 families in your little village. And then some simple planning, just looking at how the apartments were linked together. And then equally how those could be grown and extended. So depending on the size of families, you can have different sizes. Uh, extended families can be incorporated into those. So they're very flexible units. And, and then, as I say, they were all stacked together. There was, there was one with a tall tower, and then there were two other smaller, lower-rise developments of they worked together. And this, this is a, giving you a sense of those internal courtyards, solar screening to the outside to soften the environment, um, and then a concentration on the, the quality of the material, the, the use of nature, water, air movement, to soften those internal courtyard spaces. So the, the client yeah, really liked it, and, took it and, and but unfortunately we didn't get the chance to develop that but then a number about six or seven years later another client in Chennai had um, what was a similar uh, type of project but with three kind of flywheel uh, layout of a plan and asked us to develop that up as a, as a scheme which which we did and we were able to reuse in some ways some of those thinking uh, uh, these are on triple level rather than being four levels but the, the, as you come out of the lift you come into an, an external space with Zen gardens, double height spaces and areas again that you can meet your fellow uh, rent uh, owners of, of, of apartments in, in this case uh, but then they were meant to be each side was de designed to work with the sun uh, access to uh, the light and to where rain would come in, and those were the areas that then sculpted those gardens that then had seating areas uh, where you could just say, meet, meet your fellow uh, people. The client came to us because they really wanted a Melbourne project. This was, um, from his point of view, he, Melbourne at the time was the world's most livable city, and he wanted to have a fully Melbourne project in Chennai. Um, it was a very high-end luxury project and this is probably the best pro residential project that we've done it just happens to be in Chennai so uh, we did a lot of the marketing and these are marketing plans that were developed so it's hotel kind of quality lobby and arrival space um, library spaces that families could use if they were having extended events could come down to the ground floor and book this room out and have meetings and parties there uh, the same with, uh, there was games areas, uh, there was a gym, which again is, is quite standard in, in Australian projects. Uh, there's a home theatre. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Um, there's a home theatre, again, that you can book out and uh, 
you can have 16 people, there's a little bar at the back, uh, you have your own screenings of films in a family setting. Uh, so again, this was all about using technology, about sustainability, about delivering on a, on a, on a, 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 a service offer of convenience and, and luxury. So again, it was very similar to a sort of project that we would have done in, in Melbourne. Uh, on the upper level, we had a public uh, and private wing. So one of the, wing, uh, one of the three wings was uh, a double-storey villa, a private villa. And then on the other side, the two, two other areas had communal dining and areas and pool and cabana and barbecue and other areas that all residents could use. So this, this was the public area. So uh, certainly seeing that when it was being built and the thinking that children, I mean, there was a glass barrier, but it looked very kind of frightening uh, for thinking that children there, but it was perfectly safe. There was a, 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 a you know, two meter high glass barrier to protect people. Uh, and these were then private lounges that were uh, available to all residents. Again, a bookable room that you can use for uh, functions. And a private on the other side of that wall is a private kitchen. These are then some of the rendering, and all of the rendering material was developed in Australia and printed. All of the artwork, all of the furniture, again at the client's request, they wanted that to be designed and brought out, and then. I believe he then got it copied and made in, in, in India, which uh, the, the craftsmanship for the stone and the materials and the, all the work that went into that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, the inlays that were done with the metal inlays. So these are, uh, I think this one's, yeah, that one's actually a rendering, but it's very difficult to tell the difference between the rendering and the photographs. Uh, kitchens, again, Italian kitchen appliances. So, as I say, this was, if, this, if we'd done this in Australia, it would have been our best residential project. And then these are just some of the other images of the private um, villa on that, on that top level. So again, I probably won't go into the detail on this. The quality on the screen means it's... Uh, but this was done for the marketing, and they were then put onto iPads so that they could zoom right in and show... You could blow up the detail so you could see the individual floor tiles, the wooden uh, pallet flooring that was uh, developed for that, the actual marble, the quality of the marble. Uh, but even that you could zoom right into. So it just shows how all of those uh, apartments could be laid out. Or even if you wanted to join two apartments together, there was a, a, an option for them to, to do that. So that was the third one. Maybe, I'm not sure if we can go to the third, the third project. Um, and as I say, build to rent is something that has taken over the market in Australia. It's, uh, as, as it has in the UK, it's, in, in many ways, it's a different financial model to the build to sell way of development. And I, I see most of the, I think the projects here are going to be build to sell projects. 